Good evening again, everyone. My name is Chris Gallagher. I'm one of the ministers here at the Gadsden Church of Christ, located in Gadsden, Alabama. We're delighted to have you with us during our 5 p.m. online Bible study this evening. We pray that this will be a benefit to you in your spiritual life and help you out in your spiritual growth. If you're visiting with us from a state other than Alabama or a city other than Gadsden, or maybe even a country other than the United States of America, we encourage you to leave a comment on our Facebook Live you can go ahead and just tell us where you're from, or you can send us an email if you're watching from the website. Our contact information is up on the top status bar. And also, there is a button on our website down towards the bottom that you can leave us a direct comment, and we'll be glad to know where you're watching us from. If you're watching us from YouTube, you can leave a comment as well. But we're delighted to be worshiping and studying with our brothers and sisters online all throughout the world. Tonight, I want to do something a little bit different. I want to begin a series of studies that's going to move us from where we are now to once we get back in our building to help us really reset and help us to come through this a lot better than maybe we have before. If you haven't noticed, I'm in my office. The office bookshelves that you see behind me, it's kind of like my mind. It's a little bit disorganized, but I promise there's a purpose to it. Everything that is behind me on my shelves, not just the books, but all the knickknacks, the coffee cups, the glasses that you see up top, so many other things, all of those have a meaning to me. And all of those at some point in my life have had a purpose. Some have been given to me. Some I've purchased myself. Some have just been dropped off, and I don't know who dropped those off. But there's a story behind each and every one. That story helps to show the life that you and I live as individuals. To me, I like to think of these bookshelves as a history, as a living legacy, I guess. And even though they can't tell the story, I can tell the story for them. And one of the most interesting things about life, and you've probably heard me say this before, are there, there are those people in life who choose to live, and there are those people who choose to exist. And what I mean by that is this, and I'll give you a really good example that I believe fits the case when it comes to church services. You can come to a church building all that you want and never worship God. You can come and you can sit in the pews and you can just sit there. Your mind doesn't have to be in it. Your heart doesn't have to be in it. But yet you're there and you're in attendance, but you're really just existing. There's no drive. There's no vision. There's no purpose. There's no hope. Then there's other people that when they come to the building, they are alive. You can hear it in their voice. You can see it in their smile. You can see it in their eyes. You hear it in the way that they talk, in the voice tone that they use, the inflection, so many other things. But they're truly living. And here's why I believe that is absolutely important. is because the Christian life is a life to be lived. It's not just something that you and I exist in. But it's a life to be lived. When the Bible says in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 4, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. That's a part of life. It's hard to rejoice when you're just existing. It's hard to rejoice when you're dead inside. And I'll readily admit, I've stood in pulpits before and been able to look out, and you can see the people that are alive, and you can see it, the joy that's within them, and you can see everything that's around then you'll notice people that are dead inside. They've lost sight of the goal of heaven. They've lost sight to their purpose as Christians. They've just really, they've lost sight of it all. It's like the quote that says, he who has not prepared for the trip should not begin his journey. It's like they've started the journey to heaven, but they've never really been in it. They, they've never been ready to go. Either that, or they've gotten lost somewhere along the way. They've lost their purpose. They have simply forgot who they are. When that happens, I feel sorry for those people. Because their life is lived in such a negative way. And everything is negative. And they bring negativity to everything that they see simply because they're dead inside. They're lonely. Their lives may be in a world of chaos. They may like to think that their life is really good, but their life is in shambles. And we see it each and every day. You see it through the people that you may pass in the grocery store. You see people who, who have, they're walking around with no purpose. 
It also reminds me of the quote that says, some people dream of worthy achievement while others stay awake and experience it. And life is something that we can experience. So over the next few weeks, I just want to walk through a couple steps with you so that as we get back into our buildings, we'll realize that we have the greatest gift and we have the greatest opportunity. And even though we may have to slowly ease into that through social distancing measures and, and so on, but yet we can realize that we are part of a great congregation. Not just here in Gadsden, but wherever you are as well. Several years ago, I spoke on a series called Building a Great Congregation. And I want to share some of those points with you as we walk through this, but we've got to start with you. Just in a casual conversation, we've got to start with you. We've got to start with where you are in your life with your purpose. You see, you can have the vision, okay, and we're going to talk about that next week. You can have the vision, the outset, the forward thinking towards heaven, but without your purpose in place, your vision pretty much becomes useless. Vision and purpose will go hand in hand. Purpose is going to be the engine that's going to drive that vision, and you're going to be able to see more clearly. Without purpose, your actions they're futile, they're vain, they're empty. Because you need that engine that's going to drive you because purpose gives you direction toward your vision. It gives you something to think about. It, it gives you the actions to take. It reminds me several years ago, I read about a cruise and it was called a cruise to nowhere. Now, I'm a big destination guy. And what that means is, when I want to do something, I try to picture that destination and where I want to be. And I really enjoy that because to me, picturing that is kind of aids and, and gives it that little bit of hope. Okay, it helps aid in my purpose. But when I read about this cruise to nowhere, for a moment I thought, that's pretty weird. And the more I think about it, the more I go, mm, I don't know if I really like that. What a cruise to nowhere is this. You get in a boat, and the boat just goes out in the ocean and drives in big circles and, and, and sails in big figure eights. There's really no destination in mind, and you're out on the water, and that's all you see. Now, some of you think, Chris, that's where I want to be right now. With everything that's happened in 2020, we just kind of await the next phase of life, right? But yet, I'm not sure that I would want to do that. And I think sometimes people navigate their life like a cruise to nowhere. They have no idea of their destination. They have no purpose in life. And they just exist. And I really don't think that's what God wants us to do. The more that I read the Bible, the more I see purpose in that. Now, it's not the same, at least to me, that everybody else talks about purpose. Our purpose is our reason for doing something. And for a Christian... Your purpose is different than the world around you. Your purpose keeps you active even though a particular day, particular week, month, or even the start of a year may not be that glorious. But your purpose continually helps you to drive through that year because your purpose is pushing you towards your vision each and every moment. In fact, think of it like this just for, just for a few minutes. You're watching this because you want to go to heaven. And for those of you that are Christians and you're watching this, you know that you're going to heaven. The Bible tells us so. John says that he writes these things so that you may know that you have eternal life. And we know that heaven is a place beyond our wildest imaginations. Something that as we think about heaven, we look forward to each and every day. If you're searching for heaven and you're not a Christian and watching this, you want something better than this world. You want something that's going to be greater than this world. A few years ago, some individuals knocked on my door. And when they did, I answered the door, typically the way that I answer the door when I know that somebody's trying to sell me something. I answered the door and I said, if you're trying to sell, sell me something, I already have it. And if you're trying to introduce me to Jesus, I've already found him. And the guy said, great, let's talk. And I said, wonderful opportunity. And he said, where do you go to church? And I said, well, I said, I, I go to a church in, in a different town in, in which I live, but I believe I am the church. I said, where do you go? So we began our discussion. And in our discussion, he smiled just for a moment. He said, how would you like to live on this world, on this earth, for eternity? That was his question. How would you like to live on this earth for eternity? You know what I told him? 
sounds horrible. So it sounds awful. He said, but, but you could live here forever on this earth. I said, I don't want to live here. I don't want to live in the house that we were living in at the time. I said, I don't want to drive the car that I want to drive. The time. I don't want to have to worry about repairs. I don't have to worry about anything. I want to go to heaven. And he told me, he said, well, he said, this earth is our heaven. I said, excuse me? He said, this earth is our heaven. I said, uh, my friend, you are surely mistaken. I said, because I don't see golden streets and I don't see pearly gates. I said, I don't see those that have gone on before. I see what I see is a world of trouble, a world of deterioration, a world of problems. I said, I don't want to live here. And as we talked, I saw somebody who was sadly mistaken. He was very sincere in his, his beliefs, but he was so wrong. Because he talked about the glory of living on earth. Well, guess what? I don't want to live here. I want to live where God lives. I want to reside where God resides. I want to see what it's like to live in a room of the mansion of God, John chapter 14. I want to be there. And you see, I think that is why God sent his son. In fact, I don't think, I know. I know that God sent his son so that you and I can have the opportunity to go to heaven. And even though we may never meet on this earth because of this online experience, we can meet in heaven. I want you to remember a couple verses. The first one is Mark chapter 1 and verse 38. These are the words of Jesus when he says, Let us go into the next towns, that I may preach the gospel to them also. For this purpose I have come forth. Did you notice that? Let's go into the next town so that I may preach the gospel. So that these other towns, not just this one, but those so that those towns can hear the gospel. I think that you and I as Christians need to remember something so important. We need to remember that our spiritual purpose is, is greater than our physical purpose. I think that we have a physical purpose in life. Our purpose may is to raise our families, and our purpose is to provide for our families and protect our families. But what about the spiritual side of that? What about the spiritual protection, the spiritual guidance, the spiritual benefit? When we look at those, we start to find out, and we'll talk more about this later, but that our spiritual purpose must be in line with God's purpose. Or another way that you could say it is our spiritual purpose must be in line with God's purpose for us. Now, to be able to do this, let me mention some scriptures to you. So if you have a pen and paper, you may want to write these down because this may be something to go back and to look at just a little bit later. Now, if you're watching this once again online, you can pause this, go get a pencil, paper, pencil and paper, and you're able to come back. Or you can just go back and watch this video again. But here's what I want you to remember. To find out God's purpose, we must look in, into the one book, the one resource, the guide that God has given us. And that is his word. We must not rely upon human understanding. Because if we rely upon human understanding, then we become like that man that stood at my door. Sincere in his beliefs, but sincerely mistaken. Because he wanted to live on this earth forever. I, I don't want that. I want to be where God is. And I know that God has provided that door of opportunity to me. So the reason that we do this is because of 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. It says, For all Scripture is breathed by God, or is inspired out of the mouth of God. Okay, it's God-breathed. And it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be completely furnished or equipped for every good work. Did you notice verse 17? That the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped, thoroughly furnished for every good work. That work is an action. And we know from the book of Ephesians that we are created in Christ Jesus for good works, for good actions, for good things that we're able to be a part of. That's why, according to Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 through 16, that we can let our light shine so that people can see our good you just said it, works, and glorify God who is in heaven. So we know that as we live our life that we have works that we are able to do, actions we're able to take because God wants us to take those. And the reason is, is because God seeks the redemption of man. Now remember, God put Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, perfect environment. And 
as Adam and Eve are humans, just like you and I, they messed it up. They caused a little bit of problems. They caused some chaos. And it became very interesting for them. In fact, it became quite interesting because they got kicked out of the Garden of Eden. They were not supposed to be where they were. But instead, they found themselves living outside of the garden. And why did they do that? Because they went against God and they sinned. See, it's our sins that have separated us and God. Isaiah chapter 59, verses 1 and 2. It's our decisions to go against the commands of God that have caused this separation. We know that God is patient toward us. And we know that God does not want anyone to perish. 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 9. We also know from 1 Timothy chapter 2 verses 3 and 4 that God wants men to come to a knowledge of the truth. God wants us back to him. That's where God wants us. God wants us to be reconciled to him. And he did that because of his purpose in his son Jesus. He fulfilled that purpose in his son Christ Jesus. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 9. Because we know from Romans chapter 5, verses 6 to 11, that while we were still sinners, God sent his own son Jesus to die for us. While God knew that we would do wrong, God demonstrated his own love toward us, that while we were sinners, Christ would come and die for us. He gave his son to redeem mankind. His son came and he lived upon this earth. He didn't sin, never sinned, so that you and I could have the hope of eternal life. And we know that he didn't sin, Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 15, so he can sympathize with our weaknesses, so he knows what it's like to go through all of those things. As John would say in 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 through 17, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life, those things are not of the Father, but those things are of this world. And the world's passing away. And everything in it. But we know that he who does the will of God abides forever. And the will of God and the purpose of God is for us to glorify him, but for us to come back to him. That's why he sent his son Jesus to us. Luke chapter 19 and verse 10 says that Jesus came to seek and save the lost. So I'm going to ask you two questions. Number one, what's your personal purpose? Is your personal pur purpose as a Christian to seek and save those that are lost. We talk about following in the footsteps of Jesus. We talk about doing the things that Jesus did. We talk about reading his words. But are we actively seeking the lost? Because as we mentioned this morning, if we approach sin like people approach this COVID-19 virus, the world would be a different place. Everybody seems to want to avoid everything that may give them a moment's risk to be part of that. But do we do that with sin? The Bible tells us to flee immorality, to flee the very appearance of sin. Do we do that? Or do we simply get as close as we can? God's given us the opportunity to flee from that and to go to him. Have you gone to him? Have you put on Christ through baptism? Have, have you received his son Jesus through the waters of baptism to have your sins washed away to begin your new life according to Romans chapter 6? Is that part of your personal purpose? And if it is, it's magnified in the fact that now you can share that with the people around you so that you can have a purpose just like Jesus to seek and to save those people that are lost. And we have, the, we have the age of technology before us, even though sometimes it's not the greatest thing, it seems. Where we can send a text message, we can make a phone call, we can send an email, a Facebook message, any kind of message on social media, and we can reach out to somebody. And during a time like this, during a very uncertain time, this is your moment to shine. This is your moment to reach out to somebody that you've never reached out before just to check on them and to show them that you care physically and to show them that you care spiritually. But you've got to be willing to live your purpose. Now, let's take it to a greater extent. Let's take it, if you will, to the next level. We know that God has, has a purpose in Jesus. That purpose is the salvation of our souls. 
and we become a Christian and we join ourselves with a group of people called the church. The church are those people that have been called out of the world into God's marvelous light. And we know that the church in the book of Acts, the book of Acts is the history of the church. The Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, tell about the life of Jesus. Tell about the life of the Savior who came and who died for us. Acts begins talking about the history of the church as they met together and the growth of the church and how to be part of the church and what the early church did. In the book of Acts, in Acts chapter 5 and verse 42, it says, And in the temple and in every house they did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus as the Christ. Let me read that verse for you again, or let me, let me quote that verse for you again. In the, and daily in the temple and in every house, they did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus as the Christ. This is talking about the church. They were meeting daily. They were meeting together. They were taking part with one another because this was a brand new experience to them. And they were surrounding themselves with people of like mind and like faith. They looked around them and they said, we need to be near those people. So when we come together as a church, we take our personal purposes to seek and save the lost and to glorify God. We take those personal purposes and we unite those together. And when we have a united purpose as a church, it leads to growth. Because we begin working with each other. In Acts chapter 5, verse 42, they were meeting daily in the temple and from house to house, both publicly and privately. And that we know that the church began to grow. And we know from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 10 through 11, that the purpose of the church, okay, when Christians come together as the church, the body of Christ, from Ephesians chapter 1, when they come together as the body of Christ, that the church, the church's purpose, the church's aim, is to make known the manifold wisdom of God. That manifold wisdom of God has been hidden through the ages is that God wants you in heaven. We say hidden through the ages because it was brought into the Gentiles. So, so that everybody now has the open door to be able to go to heaven. So when we bring our personal purposes together and we unite as a church, we encourage one another. Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 13. We strengthen one another. We teach with one another. Ephesians chapter 5, Colossians chapter 3, Romans chapter 12, Romans chapter 13, Romans chapter 14. Those three chapters right there in the book of Romans. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 10. So do good to all men, especially those of the household of faith. Because we have this united effort together. And when we get our purposes blended together and we unite not just with our purpose, but our topic for next week is our vision. When we unite with those things together, we start to see God working in us like we've probably never seen before. Because we are going to start to produce results. Because we've got to remember, it's not going to come overnight. The journey of a thousand miles starts with one step, somebody said. We've got to take that one step to begin that uniting together. In Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 10, it says, In whatever you do, do it with all of your might. Do it with all of your might. We're told in the Bible that when we do things in word or deed, do everything in the name of our Lord Jesus. When we do that, we have to understand that when we're Christians, we have a connection. And our connection is with Jesus. John chapter 15, verses 2 through 8, and we won't have time to go into that this evening, but it talks about Jesus is the true vine. John Maxwell once said that if you're connected to the vine, you'll do fine. I think that's exactly right. Because as our connection to Jesus helps us connect to each other, and we begin to build this relationship. We begin to build the strength that's together. William Penn once said that he that does good for God's sake seeks neither praise nor reward, but he is sure to receive it in the end. I think he's right. So here's my question to you this evening. As we have talked just a little bit, probably a little bit fast, as we've talked, I would ask you this question. What's your purpose for living? Is it a worldly purpose? An earthly purpose? Is it a purpose just for somebody else? Because that's what they want you to do. 
or is it God's purpose? See, if we are living for God, our life changes. It changes in insurmountable ways. Things that we could never think possible become possible because we are serving the God of the universe. I encourage you this week to think about your purpose. Think about the reason behind your actions. If there's anything that we can do to help you out, we want to do that. We want to help you out in your spiritual growth because we want to see you not just on this earth, but we want to see you in heaven. So think about that this week. We'll come back next week and we'll talk about our vision and our vision of heaven. But let's go ahead and let's close in a moment of prayer. Our Father and our God, thank you for allowing us to be here today. Thank you for blessing us and thank you for watching over us. May we always be strengthened, Father, knowing that our hope is in you, knowing that you are the God of all peace, that you are the God of everything that we see around us. Help us, Father, to be faithful. Help us look to you for our ways to grow in our life. We ask this of beer will in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you again for being with us during our 5 p.m. Bible study this evening. We pray that it has been a blessing to you. If you didn't get all those scriptures, just reach out to us, reach out to me. I'll be sure to get you uh, an outline of what we talked about tonight along with a list of those scriptures. But thanks for being here. Let's sing one more song, then we'll have a few announcements at the end. Then we hope to see you Wednesday evening at 6.30 for our Bible class. Thank you once again for being with us. Yeah.